So what you're looking at now is the boomslang, uh, Dies of Lardis typus. And the boomslang is one of Southern Africa's most common and most uh, well-known snakes for many reasons. The boomslang name originates from the Afrikaans word boomslang being a tree snake and this is due to its arboreal lifestyle. Uh, the species can grow to almost two meters in length. And the species also, it's actually got quite a big distribution. It comes all the way from the bottom of Western Cape. It hugs the coast, carries along all the way through Eastern Cape, and goes up into Limpopo and up into Africa as well. Cool, so uh, in front of me here, there's a nail boom slang. And as you can see, the coloration is different to what most people expect Wormslung to be. And it's not actually uniform green, but it's more of like a fluorescent green with black bars and speckles. And this is which the kind of snake you would find down in the lower Eastern Cape and Western Cape. That's because there's a, it's not formally described, but there is, a, there is talk of a subspecies of Wormslung. This one would be Diasphaloides typus typus. And as you go further north, you get uh, Diasphaloides typus veritas. And although the females are uniform green, um, brown, usually throughout the range, from the east all the way to the, the north of South Africa, the males tend to change color. So above Eastern Cape, at the top of Eastern Cape, you get like a uniform grass green, Wormslung. And that's the different subspecies that's not described yet. And this is the one from the Eastern Cape that we and Luke are pretty used to now from our time in Grahamstown. And in my opinion, this is a very, very beautiful snake, and I prefer it to the uniform green just because of the coloration. In later footage, you'll probably see um, the, the female um, in close proximity to the male. And you can just compare the color variation depending on uh, sex. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, you'll see as well that the juveniles are a bit different. And um, they don't get their color to their adults. But these are fantastic snakes. And just love finding them. So although the female is not as pretty as the male, it has a very important job. The female is oviparous and that means it lays eggs. The females lay up to about 23 eggs in uh, early spring and they, lay, uh, they hatch in about midsummer. So uh, the venom of the boomslang is hemotoxic. Um, it's a, a, a blood destroying venom. And basically what happens when they bite you, this goes through, it stops the anticoagulants in your blood. So you start bleeding from all your orifices, you get bleeding under the skin, and eventually you die of, of sort of a brain hemorrhaging. Um, after a couple of days. So you got quite a while with Wormslung. There is an effective uh, polyvalent, no, it's a monovalent antivenom produced just for the Wormslung in South Africa. Um, but bites are very, very rare. There's most of our bitten, uh, most people that are bitten are, are snake handlers and stuff like that at snake parks or enthusiasts such as ourselves. And that's just, just a statistics game. You play around too much with this, you, you've got a good likelihood of getting a bite. Um, the, the venom glands situated on the top of the head and they have these small back fanged that are situated sort of just behind the eye. And there's this mis misconception that the, <coughs> the fangs being so small and stuff like that, they actually, uh, they can't bite you on sort of the, the bigger parts of your body. But this snake can open its mouth 170, 180 degrees. So if it wants to, it can bite you on your upper arm, probably even on your leg somewhere. And um, so they, they're, really, they're really well adapted for this arboreal lifestyle, as you can see. Um, they normally hunt chameleons, small birds, um, and sometimes even frogs and stuff like that. And they've got this very good vision, binocular vision, with these two great eyes that sit on the front. And they can spot their prey from quite a while and uh, go and get it. Okay, so this is a juvenile Wormslung. Uh, you can see she's still got sort of this two-tone color around the head, a bit of yellow, still a bit, and a, quite a division on the jaw with a lighter jawline and then darker top. Wow, let's go for it. Um, angry they actually let you know so they'll puff their throats I don't know if she's doing it right now no, no she it, isn't no, I can't see yeah, yeah she's not doing it right now but what they do is that they puff their throats to warn um, predators or threats to them that they mean business so right now I'm unlikely to take a bite if she was to I'm not gonna take that risk but um, it's quite a good warning sign they puff their throats like vine snakes do and it lets you know that 
you should not touch them because they've, they've given you enough slack now and it's time to let them be. So as you can see, this snake has keel scales below the body and it uses these scales to climb in trees. Yeah, this scale is just to give it a bit of traction and a bit of grip whilst it moves through the branches. And other snakes which have these kind of scales include uh, Natal green snakes. And the bush snakes. To name a few. <laughs> and uh, a couple of guys say that apparently in the beginning of the season, September, whatever, um, males often uh, be trying to follow these females to start mating. And you get sort of four or five animals in a tree, in a single tree. Um, which would be, would be quite an amazing sight. Uh, that would be love very to cool to see that. Um, but yeah, worm slangs, you normally see them briefly crossing roads or things like that. Or if you're lucky, birds will, will shout at them in the trees and you'll, you'll get to see them there. But other than that, they're very shy snakes that just don't hang around. They're just they're hard to find and hard to catch if you, if you really want to get hold of them. Okay, so there's a big fallacy out there that um, worm slugs especially wear little hats on sunbears. Sad to say they do not, that's a fallacy, they wear socks. Socks is the thing, so when someone tells you they wear hats, they wear socks. As you can see from the tail here, the tail is less full of cock because she was wearing her sock. Uh, it wasn't meant for that function, it's mainly meant to find males, but she's too young, her father's not let her go to school, so she's going to wait until she's a bit older. Uh, another fallacy is that um, juveniles can't envenomate uh, bites aren't as dangerous. Just wait, can we put a disclaimer in there? The reason we look Asian is there's a car in front of us that's white and it's reflecting which is making us get this Inuit kind of, you know, stop the light damaging your retina thing. I just want a disclaimer. So that's why we look like this. So, and as you can see, she is looking for her sock. Okay. I think we lost her sock. Really. Yeah, it might be in the container. Yeah, okay. So it's fine. 